Hello and welcome to another chess video. I'm Fide Master in Korea Hunason from Iceland. And in this video I'm going to be looking at uh, my tournament game from yesterday. Uh, yes, yesterday and tonight and tomorrow there are games in the Icelandic League. It's played over two weekends. Uh, this is the second weekend. I'm playing for the Reykjavik Chess Club, my uh, boyhood club. The, uh, the club I grew up in. My opponent he plays for Akureyri Chess Club, which is a town in north of Iceland. And uh, unfortunately, we're not really contending for the title this year. There are very very strong teams, but we're trying to get to the podium, and we have some slight chances. But still, three rounds to go, so who knows what will happen. But yeah, in this game, uh, this was played. I was on board seven for my team. We have a pretty strong team, uh, three Grandmasters, one International Master, and three Feeder Masters, so a pretty strong team. And yeah, board seven, I had the black pieces, and I didn't really know who my opponent would be until about 20 minutes before the game. Uh, I saw who I'd play, and I know he plays the English opening. So I just briefly uh, checked the line. On my phone that I want to play, that I have played, and it, it turned out that I, you know it gave me some ideas in the game. Although I played this plenty of times uh, over the board. No, I mean uh, online, so uh, you know I have some ideas. But okay, as expected, c4. He always plays that, so no surprises there. And I played c5. I played him once, not too long ago in a blitz tournament. And I think we played the same line, and maybe he remembered that later in the game. So, okay, symmetrical English, and these are all normal moves. Get the pieces out, and he plays the uh, uh, most common move here, knight to f3, and I go d6. And I'm sure there are some blitz games in my life, blitz uh, series, where I have played this. I played bishop f5, and the idea is very simple to play queen d7, bishop h3 h5 h4 shock mat attack play four play for an attack so the usual move here is to play d3 then this idea springs to life and most people are, are uh, playing like rook e1 bishop here here h5 and already h4 is uh, is on the cards if, if you play like a normal normal type of english move like rook b1 h4 you already can't take because rook takes h4 and queen g4. So there are some traps that white has to avoid. So to avoid me playing bishop to h3 and queen t7 and bishop h3, my opponent played h3. Now this has pros and cons. This does stop my idea of uh, getting my bishop to h3. But on the other hand, after queen t7, getting the pawn on h3 and king to h2, you kind of have a setup that normally you don't have. You normally have the pawn here. And once you advance on the queen side, black usually does something on the king side. This formation is slightly weaker. And I even saw some games. Uh, I looked at some some example games. I uh, saw one nice game where black played f5, f4, took on g3, had the knight on f5, and sacked on g3. So you know different different types of options that that happen. I saw one game where uh, Marcus Rucker, who was a grandmaster from Austria, was playing with black pieces and he played e5. And he's usually quite well prepared, so I just decided to uh, to follow his handling of the opening. And after h6, sort of my, you know, knowledge uh, ended. I remember, I remember he played h6, but uh, I didn't really have time to check, so I didn't see what happened uh, in this game. White played rook b1. It's always uh, a normal idea to play for a3 and b4. And the rook uh, is good on b1 in conjunction with the bishop because they intersect here on b7, which can be useful. I went on with my development. And basically, black's idea is to castle. Uh, the bishop probably must re to, uh, retreat to e6. And we have what's called the botvinning setup. These pawns here and the piece formation. This is called the botvinning setup. And white can also play this in some lines of the English, named of course after Mikhail Botvinnik, the former world champion. 
My opponent now played knight d5, and this line is very often about uh, the fight for this d5 square. And for that reason, very often white is maneuvering his knight from c2 to e3 to control this square. After knight d5, I briefly considered e4, but I didn't go for it. I went bishop e6, fighting for d5. <coughs> and I think you should play. You should keep the knight in d5. Play something like either knight e1, go for this maneuver, or knight e2 even. But he took on e7, which does surrender uh, the e4 square, uh, the d5 square for the time being. And here I wasn't sure how to take. I took with a knight just to uh, have d5 available, but queen takes e7 is definitely an option also, keeping the knight here. But I took with a knight. I'm not sure which is better. I think the computer slightly prefers queen takes e7. And now b4 uh, by my opponent, Mikhail Johan. And yeah, this is a thematic move. He wants to open up for the rook on the b-file. And I wasn't sure how to play it here. In the end, I decided on castling, but uh, I was also wondering about something like this. Maybe now castles and then play d5. I thought this should be okay. Uh, it's a different kind of position, but white also uh, has no reason to be unhappy. I think his pieces will find the typical English opening squares. And I think it's just around an equal fight, probably slightly better for white. But I castled. He took on c5. And now probably he should go knight e2. I would have to uh, defend the pawn here, probably play rook a to b8, maybe knight c6 also. Rook a to b8 is logical, knight to e4. And it's slightly tricky because, okay, this pawn is attacked. Uh, the move I would like to make is b6, but this fails to uh, to uh, sneaky trap. A trap you would find if you would... Uh, I will link to my video where uh, I talk about you know how to think in chess and find tactics. And it's to look at the forcing moves. And if like white looks at the forcing moves, it's actually very similar to uh, the Smyslov example. White would play bishop takes h6, and I can't take because of the check incoming on f6, hitting the king and the queen. So for this, this reason, I would have to play queen c7. And white would probably have uh, a nice, slight uh, English opening edge. Instead of this, my opponent went for uh, a very crazy idea. And uh, yeah, we kind of, since we're mentioning this video about, uh, you know, which talks about the forcing moves, you, you should always look at the forcing moves. When I castled, I should have looked at everything. I did look at d c5, which happened, but I should, have, I should have kept going. The move he played now, I didn't really fully analyze. I just, I kind of got lucky because I instinctively rejected it i mean this this can't work so i didn't really check the details but he went for the move knight takes e5 so like i said um maybe in this case probably i was right and maybe it was luck and maybe it was just experience i just rejected the idea and that's what stronger players than me do they they're quicker to react uh, reject ideas so that they don't have to check in intuitively they know something is good something is not in this case okay i rejected it but maybe it was a bit risky because my opponent he takes on e5 i take back he gets a pawn here on b7 who takes b7 i have to move the queen in a way that uh i'm protecting the knight on e7 so i'll pick queen d6 and now he takes on h6 and this is a third pawn so he gets three pawns for the piece which is equal material however uh, i didn't believe in this uh, and i thought i was doing well here because my pieces are quite centralized the bishops the knight has a square to jump to there could be some danger on this diagonal and and his pawns the three pawns they're not really you know he's not threatening any forks or uh, expanding the pawns so after rook after b8 getting the rook out of uh, the line of fire of course it was attacked by the bishop 
Now I'm threatening just to take take on b7, play the other rook, and enter on b2. So I don't think white has enough here. He played f4, trying to get the pawns forward, trying to get some uh, something going with the pawn. But I played bishop d4, a nice uh, anchored square for my for my bishop. He can't push it away just yet, so a nice centralized bishop. And now he took on e7. So this is just uh, an exchanging operation. Probably better than me taking on b7 and getting the rook on the b-file with tempo. I took on e7. And I was expecting, uh, of course, bishop takes a8 when uh, I'm off the piece, but he has the three pawns. However, um, if we just have a quick look at that line, he kind of has to stop me from going here. And he has a problem with his bishop. I think I can play king h7. The bishop goes here, I play f6, hit the bishop, it goes back and I play g5. And the bishop is trapped. So maybe he thought he could take the bishop uh, a move later and he played g4. His idea probably to play f5, trying to get some attack, hitting my bishop, and then maybe later take on a8. But this move has a tactical flaw. Can you find it? What's the tactical flaw with this G4 move? I suggest you pause the video and if you already, if you haven't watched the video about uh, how to think, find the tactics and forcing moves, look at that and come back. And if you're on paused, I'm going to show you the solution. Um, we look at the forcing moves. There are no checks. There's only one check, bishop G1, which we quickly reject. Or don't even look at if we're more experienced. And the captures. Bishop takes g4. Force move. If he takes, which he didn't do, I again look at the force move and it's checks first, queen h4. He has to interpose the bishop. Now the bishop is no longer attacking my rook. And I take on h6. And I'm completely winning. So after bishop takes g4, he played bishop to g5. Of course I have to check the forcing moves taken on e2. Uh, I didn't take, because queen takes e2. Uh, I think he can just play h takes g4. That's what I thought during the game. And my rook is still hanging. Bishop takes e2, he takes on e7. I take on d1 and a8 hangs at the end. So I played f6. Again, forcing moves. No check, no capture, but I have a threat, f6. Now a pair of forcing moves, he takes on g4, I take on g5. And before that, uh, I didn't take on g5 immediately. I looked at the line with queen takes h7 and I was quite happy that uh, I rejected it because it looks quite um, quite tempting. I play queen h7 and if he plays bishop h3, I take his piece and my rook is no longer attacked and I will be up a rook. So he would have to play king g3 and I play f takes d5. Now if you were to take on a8, I have this check here, queen h4, because of the pawn. You would have to go here or here. Both squares are bad, uh, especially this one I take here. And f3 is not better. And I've gained uh, a tremendous uh, attacking position. But I did reject this correctly because he has bishop d5 check. And I did look at this, bishop d5. Okay, if I go to f8, he can take with check, and either I go to e8 and his queen enters the game, which I did not want to allow, because now he has a lot of pieces around my king, and king e7, he has rook f7. And even though I'm off material, I have two rooks and the bishop, he, he does have some pawns, but black should be better here, but still this would be, from the position we had, this would be uh, a success for white. Also, the natural king g7, I correctly saw that he can play rook h1, and all of a sudden my queen is trapped. Bishop covers this, and uh, this is where I ended my calculation correctly, so I was quite happy with that. I kind of got uh, more alert with, with the calculation after I, I dismissed knight takes e5, even though I, I got away with it which I would like to think was on correct intuition. 
But still, uh, from there on, I, I, I was checking everything. Okay, I took on g5, which uh, I think is the correct move. And he played bishop e4. I mean, he should take on a8. But, yeah, now his king is so wide open that even though at the moment he has, what, uh, six pawns against four, he could take here to, no, he can't even, even material. So any move with the f pawn just opens up against this king. And I have easy moves like uh, moving the king, the rook comes over. Black is winning. So he tried to uh, make something happen on the king's side, but it was just too late. I took on f4. And I was hoping for uh, queen e1, which did not happen. This is the position I uh, posted in, on my community tab. And I was really hoping for this because I was going to play my move <coughs> instantly. A newspaper <laughs> kind of move, you know, rook b1. The queen was covering queen h4, but now there's no square for the queen. All my pieces are covering squares on the diagonal. And if he takes the rook, I enter with the forcing moves. Checkmate. So rook b1 again, a forcing move. First the checks, then captures, and then attacks. Threaten something, rook b1. Okay, he played king g2, but now my queen is coming in. Threatening maiden 2. He took on f4, preventing that. But now rook f8. And now I get out of the attack on a8 because I'm counterattacking here. And if he trades on f8, my rook takes on f8. He took on a8, rook takes f4. Bishop f3, and I quickly spotted the checkmate pattern here and pretty quickly took on g4, playing the forcing move. Rook takes g4 check, another check. If he goes to f1, there's maiden g1. He went to h2, but I uh, introduced the bishop and king h1, queen h3, and resigns because king d4. And this, I have, yeah, you know, this nice pattern of the queen. This is very similar to uh, the pattern that happens in the uh, Stellwagen mate from a pattern recognition, bishop to d4. The queen is covering this and the bishop enters on the other diagonal. That means mate. You can play e3, but a take and checkmate. So yeah, a nice start to the league this year. My opponent was rated uh, 2147. I have three. Well, I'm not sure how many I will play, two or three. So I have some tough games coming up. Uh, tough game tonight against a very tough opponent um, and probably I won't have time for videos because I play tonight and then uh, early tomorrow morning and then there's going to be a closing ceremony and partying and meeting up with friends and this is like a very nice chess festival we have four leagues uh, I mean four divisions of the league so you're kind of meeting all, all the Icelandic chess players you know the Icelandic chess community it's very you know close knit, so you know a lot of people, and you meet some people from you know uh, out of the country, so it's like a big family festival in a way, and a very fun event. So yeah, uh, that was my game from yesterday. This was actually the sixth round, and if I have some interesting games uh, of the remaining ones, I, I will also show you show you them, uh, show them to you. But maybe, uh, most likely, I will not have time for a video until on Sunday. But I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.